Hello, it's Mr. Cherick. I'm going to walk you through the first assignment for the uh, human figure unit. This assignment you're going to draw hopefully a human skeleton uh, either on a scratch board or as just a, a regular contour drawing and you're going to try to get familiar with the human ske skeleton by drawing it. Uh, having an understanding of anatomy and the way the skeleton uh, sort of informs the various surfaces of the human form is, is kind of important if you want to be able to capture the human form in a more detailed and accurate manner. Um, I'm not really going to expect you to master it here, but it's, it's helpful to get acquainted with it and sort of familiar with it if you want to increase the accuracy of your drawings and sort of understand the, the human form and why it looks the way it looks. Because the skeleton informs an awful lot of how fat and muscle sort of hang off of it and, and sort of helps guide you know the basic human form and how you would render it just by way of structure. Uh, for each project you'll have to make a setup and draw from life. Um, for the first project you'll have the option to use animal skulls if you want. Uh, again this is optional. I don't recommend it only because you know you want to do a human skeleton and try to get yourself familiar with that since that'll be helpful for projects later on but if you really really want to do like an animal drawing or a drawing of an animal skull, that, that's fine. You can, you can do that for that first project if you want. Um, for that, uh, the animal skulls are all around the room. They're on top of the cabinets. They're in cabinet number 18. There also might be some in Miss Setterstrom's room, so just look around for those if you want to use those. The full skeleton is hanging in the corner near cabinet 18. Make sure you're very careful when you get that down from the hook. Uh, if you want to get it down yourself, uh, make sure you grab the base of the pelvis where the spine connects with it. There's a metal rod that runs through the spine and that'll allow you to sort of grab onto that and unhook it from the hook. If you're having trouble with it, ask somebody tall like me to help you out. Um, when you've got it down, you want to be very gentle with it. It is an actual human skeleton, uh, so you don't want to break any of the bones or any of the armature holding up the bones. Um, and be respectful to it, obviously. Uh, there's a pink chair with holes in it that I have prepped especially for propping the skeleton up in a seated position. Uh, if you don't know where that is, it's in Seth's room. Look around for the pink plastic chair with the holes drilled in it. And then you're going to use some, uh, some wire to attach the skeleton to that chair and kind of prop it up. Uh, if you're having trouble getting that chair, I'll help you out with that. Uh, the wire and the wire cutters are in cabinets number four and six, I believe. Uh, and again, I can help you attach it to the chair with the wire if you want to do it yourself. Wires in four and six, and you can just sort of do that yourself. Just make sure it's in there nice and tight, otherwise it will slide out and fall over, and you don't want that to happen. Your first project here is drawing a skeleton on scratchboard. Scratchboard, if you've never used it before, is all black paper with a kind of a white ground or base behind the black, and you scratch the black to reveal the white. Um, this is kind of the opposite of what you normally do, which is like black charcoal or black pencil on white paper. So you kind of have to think about your lights and your darks a little bit differently. Instead of doing like an outline, you're just want to you're just going to want to start rendering the lightest parts first, and you know make those lighter and lighter instead of making the shadows darker and darker because the paper is already black; it's already dark. Uh, so, you know, it, it doesn't really require you to darken it at any point in time. And it's, it's also kind of frustrating uh, for students who've never done this before in that you can't really erase any of your mistakes. So, you know, you got to be very, very intentional and very careful when you do this one. Very confident. Um, just make sure, make sure you're kind of like going about it very, very gradually as you work it up. Uh, don't, don't start making like deep, deep cuts uh, right out of the right out of the gate. Sort of gently scratch in a few hints in there and then maybe fill it out further. Um, your, your composition, whatever you draw, whether it's an animal skull or a full skeleton, should fill a good three quarters of the paper. Make sure you fill up a lot of that paper. Um, it can run off the edges if you want it to. Like if you just want to focus on a s particular part of the skeleton, uh, you can do that. Uh, try not to do just one limb. Try to have at least two limbs and, and sort of fill your page up with as much bone as you can. The more the more uh, practice you get drawing those, you know, particular structures, the more aware you're going to be of them when you draw the full figure or a portrait or what have you. Um, and then again, try to make your drawing representational. If you're having trouble getting started with this, please, please, please let me know, and I can help you kind of get started. 
Uh, it's not too hard. There's a little bit of a trick to scratching with the scratching tools, and um, I will supply the the paper and the scratch tools to you. So please ask for those if you're going to do this project. They're in uh, locked cabinets, so I will have to get them out for you. And please make sure you return your scratch tools and supplies when you are done, because we do not have a lot of those, and uh, these tools are kind of special. We only use them for scratch boards. So yeah, make sure you don't lose them or break them or anything like that. Here's um, some student examples. They're not the best examples, but they're great examples of what you can do with this project. Uh, notice a lot of them are animal skulls, and again, you know, you can do an animal skull if you really, really want to. Otherwise, uh, focus on the skeleton and draw the skeleton. And again, the whites are what you're drawing in. Uh, you're not drawing in the shadows at all, and you can't correct your mistakes. So if you look at the one on the lower right hand screen, you notice it's kind of scratchy, kind of rough. He's doing a lot of cross hatching. Uh, he probably built that up uh, via like just gradual layers and layers and layers of cross hatching until he got the whites he wanted. Uh, that would be a kind of a smart way to go about it. And again, you can't you can't really do outlines. Uh, there's not really a white outline to some surfaces like some bones are going to be shrouded in shadow and to get an outline of that you're just going to have to work with the whites and work your way into that shadow uh, not the other way around your next project choice is drawing a skeleton and a contour so you'll draw the skeleton as a contour drawing but then you'll draw what you think would be the contour of the person in the skeleton now this isn't going to be 100% accurate and you're just going to do some guesswork. Uh, but essentially this will look kind of eerie. It'll look like somebody's see-through or like you're looking at them through an x-ray because there'll be the skeleton and a pose and then there'll be your guess of what the flesh would look like around that. And it's, it's kind of fun to guess but you can sort of make those inferences based on a little bit of knowledge uh, like you know the collarbone is pretty close to the skin. Uh, the cheekbones are where the actual you know cheeks would be and your eye sockets would be um, your wrist is very very narrow so when you get to that part of that bone you know you want to narrow your forearm muscles to that bone um, there's little hints like that here and there that will help you draw the actual contour of the person's uh, flesh but uh, you'll start with that foundation of the human skeleton and that's really not too hard to do I'm just going to do a basic observational drawing a contour drawing of the skeleton um, that will be set up. Again, the skeleton, you're going to want to attach to that pink chair. And I can help you do that if you're having trouble getting that set up. And then you'll do it on a full sheet of paper, 18 by 24 inch white drawing paper. And you can use a border if you want or not. It's up to you. Try to fill up most of the composition, at least three quarters of the paper, and try to make sure your drawing is as representational as possible. Again, the more familiar you are with the bones and the proportions of the bones, the more uh, help this project will give you when you decide to draw like a full figure, fully fleshed out, fully clothed. Um, this sort of helps inform your sense of proportion and how you draw, especially the rib cage and the core of the human form, because you know the way that is shaped is very specific, and it sort of helps determine that that sort of area, that chest and abdomen area. So here are some fantastic student examples ranging in all sorts of different types of skill level um, and again some, some of them are actually done with you know like shading which you can shade your drawings if you really want to it doesn't really matter some of these drawings were also done in the reverse uh, so these were drawings of people who were sitting and then the students added the bones later and you can kind of see that in some of these, like the main large drawing here. That was probably a skeleton that was added later. That top drawing, the skeleton was probably added later. But some of the other ones are just pure drawings of skeletons that could have a contour around them or have a contour guest around them. That's essentially what you're doing. Um, it's important that you get that core form down, and then the actual contour of the person isn't that important. Uh, you're just making an informed guess. And if you're having trouble making a guess, there's tons of books on human anatomy and the human form on our bookshelves. I can walk you through kind of what your guess should look like. Um, but just, you know, use your, use your instinct and just sort of feel around your body. You'll notice certain parts of the skin are very close to your bones. Like if you look at the kneecap in uh, the drawing of the cross-legged woman, you can notice that as soon as that knee gets toward the bone there, it gets very, very close to the skin, which is kind of true to life. Um, and if you're having trouble making those inferences, 
uh, ask, ask for help. I can help you reach those conclusions and sort of help you figure out the form around your skeleton. Uh, I just want to talk about this artist real briefly, and then you can take a look at some of the other artwork in here. Uh, this artist, Chloe Pine, is one of my favorites. She is a master draftsman and just does these exquisite, incredibly eerie, simple drawings of um, often women with children. And then she'll draw like the skeleton underneath the women, or the skeleton will overwhelm the actual form. And they just look incredibly haunting and beautiful and, and eerie, and they, they have a very, you know, heavy sense of mortality and death and all that hanging around them and they're just they're fantastic look up uh, her and her website and you can get some full resolution scans of these drawings and they're just they're wonderful to look at um, they're very very interesting the next couple of slides are going to be slides of her work and then a couple other artists that deal with anatomy in their work uh, some of them are not going to be really too safe for work they're going to have some partial nudity in them so you know just be conscious of that. Um, this of course is fine art nudity so you know it's acceptable for educational use. Uh, make sure though that you're aware of that and realize that most of these studies would be done in like say for instance a life drawing class at a college level where you would actually have access to a nude model so this is done out of context of that so you're just gonna have to make do with what you have. Um, again browse the artist and then if you're having trouble with the setup for this assignment please make sure you ask for help and I'd be glad to help you. And that's the first choice for the human form unit.